All right, what's going on, guys? A few days ago, we got our first look at raw gameplay of Armored Core 6, with about four minutes of demo level footage showing off many of the new combat systems, the new garage, and a preview of one of the major bosses of a level. Now, while the majority of people were extremely satisfied with what they saw, thinking that the gameplay provided looks like a fantastic modern take on the series, it was a fairly large division that came out of that, with a lot of classic fans very upset by some of the changes presented, because there were quite a few things in that gameplay that unless you have long time experience with the series you wouldn't have noticed. Many things that I didn't notice. That classic fans are saying takes the spirit out of the game and turns it into a souls like. So today I want to break down a lot of the concerns of the classic fans and discuss whether or not Armored Core 6 is too souls like because the changes are real but they might just be the key to taking the series to the next level. But before we get into that let me give a shout out to today's sponsor. We still have a long ways to go before we're playing a major From Software game again and if there's one thing From Software is great at is creating suspense for their games. But thankfully in times like these, today's sponsor is here to help. With World of Warships, you can command a massive naval fleet featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels and unlock all new kinds of ships as you prepare to dominate the seas in combat. And dynamic weather effects make every battle unique and change the tactics that you'll have to employ. And every single week, there's always something new to experience with a steady cadence of new missions, game updates, and events to keep you and your friends engaged for hours on end. But beyond that, there's always an active community feeling to the game, with competitive game modes for clans that stretch across all the different war games. So if you're as anxious for Elden Ring DLC and Armored Core as I am, there's no better way to pass time than hopping on World of Warships. So pop on down in the description and use code WARSHIPS to receive a huge starter pack including 500 doubloons, 2 million credits, and 7 days of premium account time and a ship. So a massive thank you to World of Warships for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back into it. After the gameplay was shown, the conversation really kicked off after G9 posted a video titled The Armored Core 6 Gameplay Trailer Destroyed My Hype. Now, let me clarify a few things real quick. I'm a fan of G9, I watch pretty much all of his videos, and he is an OG when it comes to Armored Core, with a heck of a lot more experience in the series than me. And his video actually wasn't harping on the gameplay that much. It was mainly fixated on one new feature to the game, that addition being the hard lock-on like we see in the Souls franchise. But the conversation erupted to a lot of new features that were added, such as repair kits, checkpoints, mid-mission build changing, refill stations, and big soul-style bosses. But the heart of the issue among all the old fans was that hard lock-on with the quick turn. So let's start by taking these concerns in order one by one. Repair kits are an item that you can use in Armored Core 6, allowing you to instantly heal your health or AP without having to pay for repairs. However, you are restricted to only three uses per life or until you find a refill station. And people are frequently comparing it to the Estus Flask from Souls. And a lot of the old fans are claiming that this makes the game more casual simply to cater to that soul's audience. Now regardless of if you feel like that's a good or bad thing, there's one important piece of the puzzle that I'm not seeing talked about in regard to this, and that's actually the level design. From Software have stated numerous times throughout interviews that not only are the missions in Armored Core 6 going to be way bigger, but also longer than they have been in past installments with a major boss fight at the end. So I would say this is a natural trade-off that needs to happen. If you're going to get more out of each mission, then you're going to want to be able to do more without dying. So being able to self-heal not only allows you to stay in the action longer, but encourages exploration. And if they're going all out with the level design in this one, then I think that's a great tool to allow us to enjoy that more. And it goes in tandem with the next point, more frequent checkpoints. According to several interviews and in the gameplay the press got to see, whenever the player died, instead of losing the mission and having to restart, they could simply respawn at the last checkpoint. Now is that a change that could be deemed casual? Absolutely. But my point here would be the same as the healing. We need to consider consider the level design. If we're going to get more out of the levels, then the player is going to need to be able to take risk. I think it's just the natural progression if they're going to evolve the series. But I do understand their point of concern. I felt the same way whenever they announced Stakes of America back before Elden Ring was released. I thought that since they were removing the need for a boss run, that the game was going to be way too easy. But I ended up appreciating them quite a bit because I died a lot. But Elden Ring also had a much larger scale to it than the past games. And so when I wanted to go off and explore and take risk like that, and would run into key moments or a surprise field boss, Stakes of America were a huge help there. So I think the checkpoints are going to end up being a lot like that. The next big point of contention was the fact that you can change your AC build mid-mission. Now, whenever you find
find a workshop or end up dying, you're able to change out the parts on your AC to adjust them to the needs of the level. Now there is no denying that this is definitely a more casual change, but is it necessary? In my opinion, this is one that we're going to need to see in action when we finally get our hands on the game. Because on paper, I can definitely understand the frustration of longtime fans who can hear that and then take it as sort of an easy mode thing, where rather than the player having to learn how to accommodate the level based on the build they brought in, because a big part of the past games was doing the level with a build initially, figuring out what works or doesn't work and then going back to the shop and retrying with a build that you think is better prepared. What they've done in AC6 is basically an extreme version of streamlining that process. Will it be more beginner friendly this way? Absolutely. But I'm sure From Software has a very good reason as to why they think this is necessary. And it's kind of the same thing for refill stations as well. While those aren't necessarily new to the series, it does appear like a player will now have the option to call in a refill station, but we don't have all the details there. It does sound like a casual change, but I'm sure it'll make sense in practice. And I do think part of that practice is going to involve the boss fights. The existence of the boss fights themselves can justify a lot of these new additions. You're not going to be expected to beat them the first time you meet them. You're going to need to heal. You're going to want a checkpoint after you die. You're going to want the option to change out parts if something isn't working against the boss. And you're going to want to actually be locked onto them so you can maneuver around and dodge their attacks better. But are the existence of these bosses changing Armored Core to more of a Souls-like? 100%. But it's still Armored Core. One complaint that I've seen numerous times is that the existence of these bosses takes away from the theme of the game. Taking the attention away from customizing your AC and having the core loot be that of the old games, it's making the satisfaction come from killing the bosses like it does in Souls. And to that complaint, I really don't understand it at all. It's not like the missions are going anywhere. If anything, wouldn't a cool boss fight just add to the theme? It's the ultimate test for your AC, and in my opinion, will only bring the elements of the world even further to life. I'll expand on that further in a minute, but we gotta talk about the elephant in the room, the lock-on. As as we stated earlier, it does look like Armored Core 6 has more of a hard lock-on than the past installments, where you're able to circle around an enemy while keeping them in the center of your screen. And this is the main one that's driving the old fans crazy. In the past, it was your job to aim your AC and make sure the target stayed in your reticle. You had a bit of a soft lock-on, kind of like aim assist in FPS games, but if you wanted to have consistent aim on a target, you had to control that, all while zipping around and making sure you're dodging missiles and bullets that are coming at you. And that feeling right there of having to manage the chaos chaos is what many are saying is the true feeling of Armored Core. Now before I give my opinion on that, let me show you this. Today a new interview with a Japanese player came out who apparently has some inside information about the game, and they had this to say about the lock-on. The hard lock has some sort of limit, but the speed of it in hard lock, the camera has been a major topic of contention. They said, you shouldn't think of this as coming from Souls, but from Armored Core 4. The series so far has always had a lock-on and it's always been very demanding of the sticks, and the lockbox has always been really important, but auto siding in 4th gen brought in a hard lock so it's not really a new thing, but it's actually something Souls got from Armored Core 4's auto siding. Now personally I haven't played Armored Core 4 so I can't speak on its efficacy, but I was reading through a lot of forums from 15 years ago and even some discussion today on Twitter, and it seems like a lot of people that played Armored Core 4 didn't even know that was a feature. But regardless, I think like most of the Souls aspects that we've talked about so far, people are just thinking about it wrong. We're talking about From Software here. This game is not going to be easy. What all of these features are going to allow them to do? is turn things up to 11. For example, one thing that caught my eye in the gameplay trailer was this boss fight here. Look at the attacks that are coming out of this thing. I really don't even see how that would be possible to maneuver without a lock on and a quick turn. Honestly, does this look like a casual experience to anybody? Because it doesn't to me. When it comes to this whole discussion just in general, we have topics like this emerge every single time we get a new From Software game. They're always going to be way too easy. There's always some new feature that's going to tick somebody off or ruin the series, and they never do. I know for me personally, I fell into this train of thought with Dark Souls 3. I saw the first gameplay of the game and I hated it because they had changed the lock on and it looked way too much like Bloodborne. But lo and behold, as soon as I played the game, I loved it. And I'm sure Armored Core 6 is going to be no different to the people that are complaining now. But let's just assume for a minute that the game isn't going to be terrible, because it's not. Armored Core 6 is going to be an amazing Armored Core game, even with these Souls aspects, and all it's going to do is bring more people to the series. And as it stands right now, we have a massive amount of people that have never played these games before, and Elden Ring brought so many new people into From Software's vision. And if a few small Souls-like aspects are what it takes to get a lot of people on board with the game they would have otherwise skipped, is that not exactly what From Software needs to do? I think Armored Core 6 is going to be the revival 
revival the series deserves. The team at From Software have stated numerous times that they're excited to show people how they've evolved the series and taken the things that have brought them success over the past decade and woven them into the game that they've been wanting to make forever. And it's in good hands. We have nothing to worry about. Anyways though guys, that's going to pretty much do it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. And let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Do you think these Souls changes are going to ruin the series and make it far too casual? Or do you think people are just vastly overreacting? Either way though, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I do my best to keep you up to date on all things from software. But with all that, I will catch you in the next one.